No. Yeah, well, well, they are to a degree, but what they're saying is, well, there's no way this could have happened. They must have just run the thing like a piece of garbage. But uh, but uh, I have confirmed uh, there is a nuclear, it's one of the links, um, um, there is a nuclear, nuclear agency that oversaw Fukushima, and they said that that place was maintained like you wouldn't believe, that the Japanese engineers were excellent, and yet they still told the line and, and, and said the official story, which, which is just galling. Um, Fukushima was a very, very well-maintained facility. It was overbuilt. Um, it was tougher than it had to be. Um, it's it's a long story. The Mark One containment, um, which is you know, it's been the the the, the, uh, the the it's received a lot of ridicule over this because it is an underbuilt containment. But you didn't have to have the Mark One containment uh, uh, built to spec. You could have it overbuilt, and Fukushima was one of those facilities. So yeah, the Mark One containment isn't the best. But it's just like, you know, when you've got outside walls that are at no point thinner than four feet thick, solid concrete, you've got a pretty good containment system. And then, and then I don't know the exact measurement of the inside containment that's actually around the reactor, but from the diagram it looks like it's right around 12 feet thick. And then obviously with a car laying on top of the wall, you know, the supports are, you can see that that's a pretty beefy structure there. Mm. Um, and then um, if you look on the, on the other diagram, you can see that that, that, that car that where it's sitting is actually sitting on, it's, it's up about 20 feet. Cause that's just a column that's on, a cross column. Um, anyway, so we've got a good idea of the scale of, scale of the disaster. I'm going to back out of here. Um, now we have to get on to um, the other line. Um, associated with the Fukushima and the Japan disaster, and it was the earthquake. Um, if you click on number three, you'll see the, the seismic reading from station MYG004. Um, MYG004 is, uh, is uh, I mean, it's one of many stations in Japan. They've got all kinds of earthquake monitoring stations all over that country because it's like Earthquake Central. And, um, and so when this quake happened, they got a really, really good recording of what was going on. Uh, station MYG-004 was closest to the epicenter of the earthquake, according to Japan's own data, and yet our media is telling us the story about the, the epicenter being out in the ocean. The seismic data does not support that at all. Even the U.S. Geological Survey is supporting the 9.0 and the epicenter out in the ocean. But the, the top um, um, ground acceleration measured during the earthquake um, was, register, was registered at MYG004, and it was a seismic intensity of 6.67, which means that there was no 9.0. And if you, if you look at the tsunami videos with the tsunami coming in, it's obvious that, those video, that, the, that the tsunami is coming in and, and destroying a pristine cities that never got hit by anything. They're, they're, you cannot find earthquake damage anywhere. Well, that's a good point. And that's yet, a good point. That's a good point. When they do show it coming yes. in. It is. Yeah, uh, they're all. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it, what's 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 good here is that the information you're presenting is kind of hidden in plain sight. And when you take a step yeah. back and say, "Here, look at this," you go, oh, "Yeah, you know, that's right. That's a good point." You know, so on. Yes, and wh when you uh, when you go into the regional seismograms, I've, I've got that link here. It's uh, number four. Um, this, all this information was pulled out of a really, really detailed uh, Japanese seismology site written in Japanese, and I just had to translate it and make do with what I had. Unfortunately, they used some of the standardized numbers here. Okay, so we're looking at here. Now, this is the um, next one now. We're looking at the number, what, four? At, at number four, at okay. number four. All right. Now, when you look at this, it's important to understand what these graphs are saying. Um, here we have a 6.67. And at MYG004 with a top rating of 2,800. Um, now I studied and studied and studied and studied, and I couldn't figure out what these numbers really, really meant. Other than that, I know now that a seismic uh, intensity of, of, of 2,800 or, or 2,750 right around there on these charts e equals a 6.67 reading. Um, if you look at if you look at uh, uh, at, at MYG011. Um, you can see that it has a really sharp spike, and that means that uh, it, the sharp spike, in contrast 
with the seismic intensity being the highest, means that this station was closest to the epicenter. Because when, when you get an earthquake, that the initial break is like a thunderclap. And if you're really close to the thunderclap, you'll hear a sharp crack, but you won't really hear that much of an echo afterwards. When, you're, when you get further away from, from where that sharp thunderclap is, that's where you get the really, really um, heavy rumbling of the thunder. And if you look at, at down at the bottom here at, at, at station MYG-011, which was way out on a peninsula, um, closest to the epicenter. This, as far as the epicenter um, that the USGS and got officially uh, reported in the press, it was only uh, 24 miles from station MYG-011. And yet when you look at this, it only has uh, about a fifth of the intensity of MYG-004, and it has the signature of, of the seismic signature that uh, indicates that it's way far away from the epicenter. It's just the rumble. It's like the rumble. If you can even see on the top uh, on MYG-004, the sharp spike. Yeah, it's, and, it, on, it would be uh, analogous, I think, to next being close to where lightning uh, strikes and the thunder yes. versus far away. Yes, yes, yes. That's what you got. You've got the distant rumbling. Now, another thing that these charts are showing here, and why I selected these charts, was because is that there were three different epicenters in this quake spread out across the backbone of Japan. Stations um, MYG-013, MYG-004 were at, the epicenter, uh, at two separate epicenters. If you look uh, at MYG-013's graph, it has the sharp spike in the first, first, uh, first event. MYG-004 has a sharp spike in the second event. And if you go down to the bottom here, here's IDR-003, which is like 100 miles away from the other two events, and it's a completely different seismic event, yet they're calling it the same thing because it happened at the same time. Hmm. So we have three separate seismic events going on here. Well, how can that happen? And I was, I was like, you know, how, how do you get three separate seismic events that are all small and then, the the, the 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 nuke I mean the uh, the uh, the tsunami worthy of a 9.0 when there's no damage anywhere in the country you, if you look if you look um, at the earthquake photos you're not going to find a single down bridge or skyscraper or anything there's just nothing got wrecked um, now if you go down to the next uh, to to, uh, to number five this We'll link you to a Wikipedia article about. Well, let, me, uh, let me stop about there. For, let me stop there one second. We're going to take a break in a second, but let me. Okay. And we'll come back and start up there. But as far as seeing the damage, I remember seeing the videos of people, you know, having uh, uh, in the streets and having some, you know, uh, uh, trash falling and stuff like that. But it wasn't, you know, sides of buildings falling or anything like that. So while there might have been something happening. The video. Yes, they had they had a minor earthquake. They had they had uh, you know a six point. This, this the, the real earthquake was rated as a six point eight, which is still a significant earthquake, yeah. but not for Japan. <laughs> All right, well, it, it, it's one that's going to mess up store shelves and empty your kitchen countertops out. You know? All right, it's well, let's let's, let's let's hold on there. We'll we'll take a break and we'll come back. And if you're listening, Jimstone. Freelance.com, follow the bouncing ball as we go through these things uh, because there's a lot of uh, data here that your own eyes can walk through. So hold on, and we'll be back with Jim Stone after these messages. All right, we are back live uh, showing the rainbow through the dark. We are looking at a website, and I'm getting a bunch of emails asking for the website again, JimStoneFreelance.com, all one word, JimStoneFreelance.com. As we follow along with Jim Stones talking about what really happened in the reactors, and we bring it back, Jim. You know what? Uh, a lot of people are going to be listening to this uh, in some type of recorded form and delayed form. Do you think you can keep a link up on your main site to uh, come to this page uh, for a few weeks to come? Oh, sure, sure, definitely. Yeah, just put a link on there from the show because you're very good. Very, uh, I like your documentation. We're going through it, and people are going to listen. On delayed broadcast, there's a station in England that plays us, and then there's uh, the archives, in which you know many thousands download, and this way they could follow along with the bouncing ball at a later date. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. Um, I want to go back and, and recap a couple of things that I missed. Um, the station MYG-011 was the closest to, to the epicenter, and its reading was a 5.63. This is on... Uh, on uh, 
on, uh, I think I think it's link number three. Number three, okay. Got to back out here. Yeah, seismic station NYG 4 is what the what, what the what the link is. But there's actually a whole bunch of seismic stations on that link. Yeah, look at that. All the um, all the seismic stations are, you know, under six, or you know. Yes, except except for well, there's a 6.02 down 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 by Sendai, and a 5.93 on the other side of Sendai. And Sendai, you know, is a city where where they should have gotten at least an 8.5 to an 8.6 or 7's worth of shaking. And, and nothing happened there. There's just nothing that happened there. The only thing they got was a tsunami. So this whole thing is really suspicious. Um, so what we have here is the 9.0 that I've got marked out in the water, that is where um, where the official um, earthquake happened as far as, you know, basically the, the phony 9.0. Um, what I have here is a distance marked off in miles to the nearest seismic station on, on Japan's mainland, which is uh, 24 miles, 24 miles away from this 9.0, they got a reading of a 5.63, which is impossible, because we're talking, uh, you know, it's, 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 this, is, this station should have been reading at least 1,070 times as much energy at only 24 miles from that station, I mean, 24 miles from the epicenter. Um, in other words, these charts alone... And the Japanese, um, I don't know why they're going along with this, but they are saying that it's a 9.0. If you go to their site, I've got the original site listed. But when you look down at the very, very bottom after you translate it, they're saying this earthquake was a 6.8. But officially they're saying it's a 9.0. So it's like they've got, they've got a gun to their head. Yeah. They are being told to stay quiet about this. But their seismologists are putting in the graphs and putting in the charts the truth and, they're, and they are just hoping that someone, they were hoping for someone to figure out that there is something wrong, that, that, that this was an ambush, that it was an attack of some sort, um, it was a military operation, and, and, and the, number, uh, the numbers show it, and, 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 and the pictures show it. And, and all the evidence is weighing against, against the, the official story when you actually look what's out there. Um, now, I, I'd gone on to got on to uh, the Wiki, Wikipedia article. If, if, you, if you scroll down on this article, it actually is the best one out there. Um, I looked and looked and looked, and, and the USGS, um, it stops at magnitude 7, which is ludicrous. What number? Um, is, this, is this the number, what, uh, 5 now? Number 5, number okay. 5. It says a 9.0 will devastate an area over 1,000 miles across. Okay. Now, the Wikipedia article actually says it will do thousands of kilometers across. So I'm I'm being conservative when I say a thousand miles across. Now, Japan suffered major damage in the Kobe quake, which is only a six point nine. And some say it was a seven point two. So you know, officially it's a six point nine. And if you if you have a nine point zero, a nine point zero is going to register actually give you the shaking of a seven point zero a thousand miles away. It's approximately what it will do. It might be down another six to a thousand miles away, but. You know, the high six is like maybe 6.8. Um, and it also weighs into how deep the earthquake is. If it's closer to the surface, um, your shaking is going to be more intense up, up close and not as much further away. If it's really deep, it's going to carry further and harder um, and then not shake the, the, the local area nearly as much. But even still, a 9.0, no matter where it happens, if you're, if you're as far as Sendai away from it, which is only about a little over 50 miles, you're going to be toast. You're down because you're basically at the epicenter. Um, I have prepared a chart, a linear representation of seismic energy. Um, all these, all these uh, charts that you look at, they're, they're they're exponential charts, and so people don't really get a feel for how big um, a 9.1 is and how the Richter scale actually works. Um, if you open up uh, link 5.1, okay. I've got here. A chart prepared based upon just just standard formula, and it actually marks out where your different intensities fall as far as the Richter reading. And so you can, and it's five thousand pixels high. So you got to look. You got to look over on the left hand side of your screen if you click on it. It's just going to look like a blur over there. Right. Okay. If, if you look, if you look at that, what this is, and you know, everybody, pretty much everybody knows that that a six point Um, has one-tenth the power of a 7.0, 
and an 8.0 is 10 times a 7.0, and a 9.0 is 10 times an 8.0.